grind coffee, pour hot water, wait, press, pour and drink. This French press recipe in a nutshell, but if you want to get the best out of this brewer, in this video we'll make it a little more complicated, but for a good reason. We teamed up with our coffee mentor William Davies to take you through his favorite French press recipe. It's the one you should try, even if you don't like French press at all. If you came just for a recipe, you could skip at the very end of this video, where I sum it up in only a few seconds, but you will miss a chance to learn about coffee from one of the best in the field. Hello, my name's Gwilym, and we're going to talk about the French press. Now, I don't really like the French press that much. I'm much more of a person who likes uh, clarity. I like the paper filter. That's my method. But um, Barista Hustle did a few tests, and it kind of got my interest again in the French press. So it's been developed by people who like filter coffee. So if you like the muddy, dirty, unclear brew that a French press normally makes, you might not like this recipe. But um, if you like filter, you may do. So First, we have some coffee. It has a dog on. It's from Rwanda. It's a natural process. And I roasted it. Now, I'm going to use 16 grams and in here I'm going to put 250 grams of water. So that's 65 gram per litre ratio. There we go. Okay. I'm going to grind it medium grind. About the same as I would do for an 18 gram V60 that takes about three minutes. So for me, that's 18, 19 clicks on my Comandante. My kettle is on a rolling boil. I'm gonna leave it one or two minutes, put in my coffee. So 16 grams in. Give it a shake for no other reason than it it smells really nice. I'm going to put in 250 grams of water and set the timer. I'm not going to use this kettle. Though I love this kettle for filter, it's too slow. I want to get the grinds really wet really quickly. And the best way to do that is with a kettle and a big spout. So. 250 grams of water. Yeah. Now, if there was any dry bits, I would give it a little prod with my spoon, but it all looks fine, so I'm gonna leave it. Put it here. And we're going to wait five minutes. I'm not putting a lid on because the crust that has formed on the top here has created an amazing lid already. If I put the lid on, all that's going to happen is the crust is going to be broken up by evaporation and things and it's not going to be as well insulated. And you have a little spout here which causes like a chimney effect. The best thing to do so the best way to keep it uh, insulated is just leave it leave the crust the problem with this method is it's not as efficient as filter coffee with filter coffee you have fresh water landing on top of the coffee constantly and falling out the bottom the water that's coming in is really hungry and it wants to get inside that coffee and take the flavor and get down through the coffee bed here just sits there. You get water with high concentrations of coffee in it that settles around the coffee grinds. And that stops this water in the middle with less concentration of coffee in it. Can't get to it because it's been stopped by the water that's almost saturated with coffee and it forms a barrier. But on the five minutes, 
we can give it a stir and we can mix that water up again, which can set the extraction off again. It also helps to bring the crust down to the bottom. So that's five minutes. I'm gonna get big stir. So I'm not just breaking the crust, I'm moving the water around. I'm trying to set that extraction off again. To help the extraction, I'm now gonna put the lid on. The crust is gone, it's no longer insulated. I'm gonna put the lid on. And we're gonna wait for another two minutes. So now we're waiting for gravity to take down some of the solids and for the water to extract a little bit more. There we go. That's two minutes. So total time so far is eight minutes and I'm gonna press. You can press fast or slow, doesn't really matter. Fast sometimes gets a higher extraction, but uh, slow seems to be a more consistent brew. And when I press, if I touch the coffee at the bottom, it doesn't really matter. It's not a problem. The only problem would be is if it lifts all the coffee grinds up into the clearer area. Last stage, we wait two minutes for any little coffee particles to drop down. We don't have to do this, but it'll make the brew a lot clearer and cleaner. We're there. So, this side. I have a little carafe. And I'm gonna pour the coffee in, but not all of it. I'm pouring it slowly, and as soon as I see all the coffee sludge, all the bits floating up, I'm going to stop pouring, which is about there. It's actually ready to drink. But I'm going to wait another minute or two to let anything else settle. Right, let's see if I've cleaned it up a little bit by waiting a little bit longer. There's definitely some little bits in the bottom. One of the advantages of such a long brewing method is it has actually the right temperature to drink now. I don't have to sit and wait. It'll be perfectly fine. Still warm, but um, cool enough for me to taste all the fruity things from the Rwanda. Mm. quite clear, quite clear. A little bit more body than filter, but uh, not bad, not bad at all. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching a French press with me. Now, I will take it back from William to sum the recipe up for you real quick. Weigh 16 grams of coffee, grinded medium, much finer than what is typical for French press. Quickly pour 250 grams or milliliters of hot water. Wait 5 minutes. And then mix coffee with water and add the plunger. Wait another 3 minutes, that's 8 minutes in total, and press the plunger slowly down. Now wait another 2 minutes, that's 10 minutes in total. Pour coffee into a cup or carafe. Stop before the sediment leaves the French press. The last step is optional. You can leave it for another minute or two before you pour it into a cup. So there is even less coffee sediment in your final brew. That's it! Now I can enjoy a delicious cup of French press coffee.
Let us know what you think about the recipe and your thoughts after you try it. Also, check out the Naughty Dog Coffee Roasters if you want to taste coffee that William roasted. Well, Alish, I think it's a wrap. Suppose you are already familiar with French press and want to try something similar but slightly different. Check out our videos about brewing coffee with Arab press and Clever Dripper. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.